can see if you look closely at this screen that we've got the system rotating quite slowly at the moment. This is just a very low speed, around about 250 RPM. Um, at the input side, um, you can see here the encoder on the input side that we showed previously. This is obviously a top view, the accelerometer here, which we can keep an eye on. And has, it's prone to maybe falling off partway through the measurement if there's lots of vibration because it's only mounted with a small thin film of beeswax here. You can see the torque transducer on this side of the coupling. Two strips of retroflective tape here are the laser vibrometers, sensor heads, and then the load on this side with the um, uh, gear behind them and the encoder is just, um, this is a, this is a, um, a belt drive, a belt uh, pulley uh, wheel and the encoder on the output side is just in here. Moving to the left hand side here, you can see the kind of thing that we get in a commercially available uh, measurement system. This is an industry standard system, state of the art. And so here you can see those eight channels for the various input channels that I showed previously uh, on the acquisition front end. So two velocity channels, those are the angular velocities from the two laser vibrometers. Two RPM signals over here, you can see that they're not doing particularly well at slow speeds, they don't work too well, RPM doesn't give a particularly good readout. Um, and then we've got the torque transducer over here, so you can see at the moment we've got just around about one and a half newton meters, so very little torque. There's no load here, so that's just working against the natural resistance in the system. And then our three accelerometer directions, X, Y and Z, shown here. I can zoom in on any one of these various channels uh, using this uh, display underneath. When we've got more um, rotation speed, we'll have more signal level, and those signal levels are being shown here with these bar indicators, so we can check that we've got the sensitivity input channel set properly in terms of the input range, which is adjustable over here. This is a 24-bit acquisition system, so we have lots of resolution on our ABC, our analog to digital converter, without needing to worry too much about changing the sensitivity level to the input range to the acquisition system. Nevertheless, it's good practice to maximise the signal level on the ABC so that we get to minimise our noise in the signal uh, from our when we enter the signal channel. In terms of um, the, the encoders, we can do these measurements in a run-up fashion. So we can drive the, the system through a, an RPM range from low RPM up to high RPM, and as we pass through the various RPM, if there are any resonances in the system, when, when the RPM coincides, lots of vibration. So we set that up using these cathode channels, which are our two encoders, one on the input, one on the output side, as you see, the gear ratio there is about 17 the system's not rotating particularly fast, so the angular velocity is relatively low. Uh, I can scroll through and have a look at my accelerometer signals here in X, Y, and Z, the three different colours. In this plot, I've got the RPM signal coming in, and so we've got a cursor set up on the DC here to have a look at the the zero uh, hertz um, torque, i.e. The, the mean torque, and so we, we, we capture the mean torque to give an indication of the amount of load that's applied. There's also a, a peak here which we observe 17.63 hertz on this other cursor here, and then a couple of more plot, um, online plots here. We can see the instantaneous spectrum for one of the uh, one of the velocity signals. 
And finally, the, a numerical indicator, which again just shows us the two instantaneous mean speeds from the system.